Welcome to our lecture online. In the previous videos, we have already showed you how to find the phase currents IAB, IBC, and ICA. What we're going to do in this video is find the phase currents with a different method. We're going to use Kirchhoff's voltage rule. What we're going to do is we're going to travel around the three loops, add up all the voltages, and from that we should be able to determine the currents. We're going to start at the neutral point right here and go from N to A, from A to capital A, from A to capital B, and from capital B to little b and back to N like this. All right, so we can say that the sum of all the voltages should add up to zero, which is equal to the V a n. So we start at n and we go to a, so that's a voltage rise. Then we come around this way and we go across the impedance here with the current, so that would be a voltage drop. So it would be minus the current, I a b, times the phase volt, times the impedance, z delta. Then we come around here and we go across the phase voltage right here from B to N. That's a voltage drop because from, we go from the high to the low terminal. So it would be minus V B N. And that brings us back to the beginning, which means they all add up to zero. So what we need to do now is solve that for I A B. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, bring this over to the left side. So we end up with I A B times Z delta is equal to VAN minus VBN. Well, what I can do here is I can make this into a VNB and make that into a positive. So this is equal to VAN plus VNB. Now take a look at this. If I go from VAN, AN, and then from N to B, that is the same as V from A to B, which is the same as VAB over here. In other words, I can say that IAB times the impedance, whoop, that should be an impedance symbol right here, a delta symbol, is equal to V from A to B. Or actually, let me not shortcut it, VAB, which is the same as VAB like this. So that would be the line voltage. And then finally, I can say that IAB is equal to VAB, or I can write it like this, VAB divided by the impedance of the load. And so you can see that this is the exact same result that I got over there. So now we're going to find the next current. How about IBC? So we need a loop where we travel through this branch right here of the uh, load. So we can take the current IBC. We're going to start from here to there. So we have a voltage rise, and this will be the phase voltage IBN or VBN, I should say. So we have the sum of all the voltages add up to zero. So the first, the first one would be voltage rise, which would be VBN. And then we come around here and we drop some voltage across here because we travel in the same direction as the current. So it would be minus IBC times the impedance of the load. Then we come around this way and we drop the voltage from here to here. So it would be minus uh, VCN. So now we're going to take this. We're going to solve this for IBC. So we move that to the left side. So we have IBC times the impedance is equal to VBN minus VCN, which can now be written as VBN plus VNC, which is the same as the, let's see, from, that would be V, B, N, N, C. So that would be the line voltage from B to C. So this is equal to V, B, C, which is equal to V, B, C, like that. And finally, we could then say that the line current, or no, this would be the phase current, I, B, C, is equal to the line voltage, V, B, C, divided by the impedance. And so there's our second current, IBC, which is VBC over the impedance. And we should be able to do this for the third one. And I'm running out of room a little bit, but I could probably do it right here. So let's try that. So we're going to say the sum of all the voltages should add up to zero. So now we need a loop where we're traveling through this current right here, CA. So start from N to C. So we have a voltage rise, VCN, that's the phase voltage. 
That would be Vcn. We come around here, we travel along the direction of the current, that's a voltage drop. That would be minus Ica times the impedance. And then we come around here, we travel from A back to N, so that would be a voltage drop, that would be minus VAN. And so if we solve this for ICA, we can say ICA times the impedance is equal to VCN minus VAN, which can be written as VCN plus VNA, which combined gives you the line voltage from V to CA, which is the same as VCA like that. And then finally, if we divide both sides by the impedance, we can then say that ICA is equal to VCA divided by the impedance, and that gives you the very same result that we have over here. So you can see by using Kirchhoff's rules, we can find in the previous video, we found the line currents, and in this video, we found the phase currents. So you can see that every aspect of the Y delta circuit has now been found. We found the line voltages, the phase voltages, the line currents, and the phase currents, and that is how we do it.